Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Hip Knits podcast. This is episode 69. My name is Hannah and you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. Welcome, I am recording this podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I'm a Swedish expat who lives here with my husband and two young girls or little girls, a four-year-old and a soon-to-be eight-year-old. And um, I do this podcast about my knitting and crochet, sometimes spinning, sewing, anything in the fibre related area. So yes, if you haven't watched before, you know that this is just a time for me to sit down, relax and share some things that I love with you. Thank you for joining me. We are having a sort of overcast autumn day here in my part of the world today and um, I'm having the day to work from home so I have done a few of the things that I needed to do and now I'm just sitting down enjoying some green matcha tea or matcha tea and um, I have a few things out that I have been working on since I last podcasted so I'd like to share that with you. I don't have any show notes or anything today, not that that normally makes any difference, I just go ahead and talk about whatever. Yes, I'll just show you some knitting I've been working on and some dyeing that I have been doing and that should be this episode. What I'm wearing today is my beautiful 90 Degrees Cow by Deanne Ramsey, Adiday Designs. I crocheted this using my own hand dyed um, yarn in the Victoria sock yarn base and I used gold rush colorway this is like the prototype of gold rush the this sort of yellow color and then the second color I have used is my French Head Festivals colorway and I sort of dye them as a set to go together and yes and now I've started to purchase clothes for my wardrobe that go with my <laughs> knitting and crochet not really it just happened to um, turn out that way I'm really drawn to yellow at the moment and sort of golden colors and I guess that's just a fashion it's finally got to me it always takes me a while to, to get into um, what the new thing is I think the last time I was in a um, yellow face was probably back in high school I remember a pair of shoes I had back then that were, um, yes, that, that sort of colour. But I think since then so I've never really had anything yellow in my wardrobe. So it's back. <laughs> um, we'll see for how long. Anyway, that's what I'm wearing. I love this um, cowl and I really enjoyed making it, so I recommend the pattern. I have finished something since I last sat down to record and that's the pair of mittens that I had just started last time. I'll put them on and they've been blocked, the ends have been woven in but I have not cut them off so they're hiding inside the gloves. These aren't they beautiful? These are my colour work mittens. that I made um, as a part of the North Hampshire Knits Mitten Cow. It's the third year that's going and this is the third year that I'm participating. So I made these gloves because I wanted to join in again and um, also I wanted to use a pattern from this book. This is the book that um, this pattern is in. The pattern is called Lila Rutan. There's also an English translation of this book, but I don't think you can get the patterns as um, just individual downloads. This is a book by Johanna Valin, and it has lots of gorgeous stuff in it. There's a few of the patterns in there. And it's really interesting because all of them have um, they have a pattern, but all patterns are based on an old 
pattern found in a mitten in a museum or somewhere. So for example, there's a pattern in here. I'll show you the pattern first. Like that one. And that's actually based on a pair of, of gloves um, from a museum. So there's a bit of history in there as well as the pattern. So uh, I enjoyed using a pattern from in there. And the yarn that I used was some of the um, white gum wool fingering base that I dyed up. So this is a sock, or no, not sock base. It's a yarn base that I stock in my Etsy shop, Rosip Island. Um, and white gum wool is very local to me. It's Nan is very close by. She's in Oakland, sort of middle of Tasmania, and I'm up north. And um, it's just really great to have a, a local yarn. I know where it comes from. I've met Nan, and um, I think her story is beautiful. So I have that base in my shop because it seems logical. It's local. And I dyed it up, and this was two colorways that I dyed up on a couple of skeins that were not quite a hundred grams so I thought I'll, I'll use them up and I wanted to try this yarn base for color work I had a suspicion that it would work really well because although the yarn this is what I have left the yarn is super fine merino and it's very soft it's still grabby because it's not super wash treated so I've used previously Rauma and different like Jameson and Smith, those sort of yarn bases that are quite well known for being good for colour work. But I wanted something from Australia really and I wanted to see if this yarn base would work and I talked about this last time. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that it, it worked really, really well. It's a light fingering, I'd say. So it comes out beautiful, like delicate and not thin, but it's it's definitely not bulky. It's just a very beautiful fabric it creates. And you can see it goes really well together, the colour work, the yarns are biting together to create a beautiful fabric. I really like how my semi-solids worked up to it's a bit hard to see but the blue is it's almost like a sky in the background it has that very slight variation in the blue and then the pink is a little bit from coral to a pink it, that also has some variation it's not easy to see on the screen but it's just very subtle but so beautiful how that worked out I actually continued to make the whole mittens on my carbon DPNs. I said last time that I will probably change to working in Magic Loop, but I stayed with the DPNs. And I think because I had not worked with DPNs for about a year, the first mitten came out quite tight. Um, and then I loosened up bit on the second one so they're like slightly slightly different in size um, but they they blocked out well and yes I'm, I'm very happy with them <laughs> as you can tell from how I keep saying it and I used in total 44 grams only and I I, I don't have very large hands so these um, are quite I think because I'm a tight knitter, no, not a tight knitter, but I, I did them on two millimeter needles, so I've created quite a tight fabric, and the white gum wool fingering is quite light fingering, so they're, they're very, a very good fit on my small hands. So after I did that, I um, I looked at other combinations of the white gum wool to do in, in colour work. And I had some and um, these are some other 
skeins that I, I dyed up after that. So when I was doing uh, dyeing of some of my um, dandy sock yarn, which is a sock yarn from Nandu Woolen Mill in New South Wales, when I dyed those skeins, I would put in a skein of white gum wool in there and they turn out so differently. And I'll show a bit of that later on towards the end when I've shown you what I've been working on. Um, but that's one of my favourite things to do when I dye is just to take two completely different yarn bases, put them in the same dye pot, treat them exactly the same and see how they turn out. So I'll share some of, of that a bit later on. Um, but maybe I'll just just show some like they might be not solid enough to work together but I think um, this is just so many fun combinations that you could do those two would be fun in color work Anyway, messed up all my skeins. <laughs> okay, so yes, I finished those mittens, didn't take me very long. Now I have to post them in the finished object thread in the uh, North, North Hampshire Knits podcast Ravelry group. And uh, yes, I enjoy that. Don't know what to do with my leftovers quite a bit there. Maybe I have to make the matching hat that there is a pattern for, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'm, I'm into that much. <laughs> okay, the other thing that I then have been working on is my uh, sweater, the Crazy Heart Sweater, which is a pattern from the Heart on My Sleeve ebook, which I don't think is available anymore. It was only available for one year, I think, as an ebook. And it was a um, ebook where all the um, all the funds they received went for um, malaria research. Or no, not research. It went to a foundation or, or something to prevent malaria in. I don't think only children, but yes. If you go and look for Heart on My Sleeve on Ravelry, you can probably find it and find the information. Uh, I think that now the patterns are available as individual downloads. I can't remember how many patterns the ebook had, maybe eight, and they're all different designers, and now the different designers have them as downloads on, on Ravelry. So I did a test knit in this ebook a while ago now. And I received the ebook as a thank you for doing the test knit, and I decided to now make the crazy heart, which is oh, I can never find it. Crazy heart is by oh, it, the money went to the in support. The, <laughs> the money went to the Against Malar Malaria Foundation. So I'm making this one, which is the Crazy Heart by Tannis Lavelli. And I'm just working on the main body. Last time I showed you I'd, that I had started with the sleeves, I'm using Bendigo Woolen Mills Stella in the Cast Iron, this is the Stella Metallics. I think that was a, a limited edition of the Stella Metallics. And the Cast Iron colorway. I have started on the sleeves. I have continued a bit on the sleeves. The cast Iron there, sort of navy blue. Ooh, a bit hard to see in the light there. I have now completed all the increases and I'm just working in the round. Two at a time, which means there's a bit of yarn management that needs to happen. I'm working on two and a half millimeter needles, so it's hard work is maybe not the right way to 
explain it, but it's it's quite time consuming and it's quite hard work on the hands. So I do a bit, but I don't do it for too long at a time. I still have another four or five inches to go before they're the length um, they need to be to be connected to the body. So I did that and then I was just a bit over knitting sleeves one day so I decided to start the body. So I started that and it's exactly the same thing, it's just that it's even more stitches in the round than the two sleeves together. But it's just it doesn't doesn't have the two different sleeves in the yarn management. So it, it's it's a nice change just to swap between the sleeves and the body every now and then and yes so it's just knitting stocking it in the round just knit 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 and quite easy relaxing but not very exciting but now last time i could not really see it growing much it felt like it would take ages now i feel like i'm actually getting somewhere so that's nice and then the colors that I will use in the color work in the yoke I think will be I can't remember how many I need if it's four or five but I have these and I also have this one but I don't know if these two will blend too much so I have those four and I also have a another grey black pearl disc. That's black pearl, rose quartz, low light. Then I don't know what the other two are. Mm. Don't know. But I think they all go well together. I made a beanie to swatch the colours and the colour work and I think it turned out well so for now I'll just work on the body on the sleeves and then yes when I get to the colour work part or where to start the colour work I'll think about the order of my colours and which colours to include so that's the plan those are the main things I've been working on the mittens and my jumper and then because I had finished the mittens, I felt like I needed something else fun. I have a few socks that I'm working on, but I have not really touched them. And I'm also working on my shack sweater by Andy Satterland. And I don't have much left on that, only the cuffs. But I haven't touched it. It's been, although it's cold now and overcast, it's we've had quite a few warmer days. And I have just have not been in the... The mood really to <laughs> to knit on that one and yes I don't think I will it's not quite cold enough to wear it yet because it's knitting in 12 ply so it's quite a bulky tight fitted jumper so I haven't touched that that will come so I have a few things that are close to completion and I don't know if I should <laughs> be silly and save them for stash dash that starts in May because really that's not far away and I don't really have any long lasting UFOs or anything that I can finish up and anyway I don't know anyway I just I would just wanted to do something new and a couple of weeks ago my my four-year-old and eight-year-old daughters they they were with me when I was I was finishing up some dyeing in my studio and they'd been doing something and they came into me to see what I was up to and they wanted to do some dyeing too and I thought oh this will be messy this will be hard work <laughs> but I thought okay well I've done what I need to do we can do this if, if they're interested so my youngest said she wanted to dye rainbow so I mixed up, I think, pink, blue, yellow and green for her, so she could, she had those dye solutions. I gear them up in gloves 
and protective clothing and everything, took them outside and I had some soaked yarn and I put it in an oven tray and then gave them the, I have glass jars, I have old coffee glass jars that I mix dye solution in, so I gave than them. So my youngest, she had the four colours to make a rainbow, sort of rainbow. My eldest, she wanted to dye green and purple. So I gave her a green and a purple and her yarn in a different oven tray. So there they were with gloves and everything and they were pouring the dye solutions on the yarn. And of course, they got a bit carried away. They did not quite know when when to stop <laughs> but I helped them out a bit I moved the yarn around a bit and made sure that they well, dye all over then this I had made it too much for them really of the dye solution so I got another skein out for each of them and quickly took the other ones away before they were just over <laughs> too much dye on them so they dyed a second one with, with the leftovers and um, Yes, it did not turn out as a rainbow, really. But what I then did was that the other day I decided that my favourite of the yarns that they dyed was this one that my youngest made. This was meant to be the rainbow. I decided to start knitting a pair of socks for her. So that's that one there. So yes, this was what she created with her pink, blue, green and yellow. I think she had a green, maybe she didn't have a green, maybe it was just the three colours. Anyway, she poured it on and mixed and had a lot of fun and then I had to take it away before it was just all a brown mess. <laughs> and I like how they are coming out. My four year old, she's really happy to wear the woolens and the things that I make. so. She, she wears the jumpers and things that I made. She does not, she had socks, but she, grown, she grew out of them. So now she's been wearing my eldest daughter's socks with it, and they are too big. So I thought she really deserves a well-fitting pair of handy socks. So this is the, the dandy sock base that I have in my shop, which is the sock yarn from Nundle Woolen Mill. So she did this one, and the second skein she did with the dye that was left was this green one. So I don't know if I'll make something with that. Maybe I'll make socks for the dad <laughs> for his birthday or for Christmas. That could be fun. Yeah, and the, his daughters died and, and I need them up. So I'm doing that. I, I haven't continued any long. I think I have 44 stitches on here. And I'm just going to check now where it's at, where I need to put a heel in. I'll probably do a fish lips kiss heel. Okay, so that, that's what she dyed up. And then my eldest, she did the purple and green. And that came out nice. So I'll see what she would like made out of that. She has a few pairs of socks and I don't she's not using them a whole lot, so I don't know that I want to make her any more socks at the moment. She quite happily wears the the beanies and the hats that I make her, so maybe I'll do make her a hat and then she make just a grey out of leftover dye solution. So she has those, they go well together actually. I'll see. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on really. And then I I've been doing a lot of dyeing and with the dyeing Sorry. <laughs> um, with the dyeing, it always makes me do a lot of dream knitting, seeing the different colours, seeing the skeins together, different colour works together, uh, colours, colourways together. Yes, it makes me think about um, what I could make. And I, I had dyed up quite a few tonals on my sock base. So this is the one of the tonals I did on the Nundle Woolen Mills, which is my dandy sock. And then I did some fun speckled colourways. 
And then I was thinking about, I looked at the, um, you probably will have seen this pattern, it's the Sock Arms, I think it's called, it's a jumper by Telebin's mum, I think. So it's a jumper and fingering weight where you use a self-striping sock yarn for the sleeves and then just a, a solid or semi-solid for the body of, of the sweater. And I just had this thought that, oh, I could make it with speckled sleeves and a semi-solid body. And I thought, maybe a bit crazy, I don't know, but just to have that as a sleeve and that as the body or something like that where they the speckles go with the semi-solid I don't know but those are the thought of this thought of the, the sort of <laughs> sorry they are the sort of dream knitting thoughts that I have in when I do the dyeing and I as the skeins are drying up and I see them together and yes and, but I don't have the time to make all those dreams reality. But I, I looked through the pattern and the projects for the sock um, sweater and I couldn't see anyone who'd done a speckled combined with a semi-solid. I would like to see what it looks like. And I have that pattern. I purchased the pattern when it came out. I have done some test knitting for Tilly Bean's mum. I think that is it Stephanie Lottman? I think that's the designer. I'll correct myself or I'll put it down here. Um, but I ha yes, I have been doing some test knitting for her and she has great patterns. So I purchased that when that came out because I thought it was such a cool idea. Then I think I'll just show you a bit of the other dyeing that I've been doing. They are the 100% Superfine Merino from White Gum Wool. These ones here, so I have a few um, semi-solids and then a few with a bit of variation. So this is, these ones here, in the, the sock yarn, they came out as speckled skeins, or skeins with speckles on, but on the white gum wool, the colour just blends in more and you get just that variation with a bit of colour just mixed in more. Um, I don't know, I have just a few that are just semi-solid. I think that would be great with colour work. But what I wanted to show was that I did a few skeins and I used the white gum wool sock yarn. Oh, the sun came out outside. Totally different, isn't it? The light. Anyway, I used a white gum wool sock yarn, which I think has 20% nylon in it with the super fine merino. Not sure. I've used it for socks and it's really great. It feels almost exactly like the 100% merino base, but it does have that nylon in it for some strength. So I had some skeins of that that I dyed up and I dyed them up together with the dandy sock, the Nandal woolen mill sock yarn and I did one of each and I just played around a bit and it was interesting to see what the end result was. So this is one example, this is the Nandal with the superwash merino nylon, this is the white gum wool merino and nylon and you can see again how it just blends more on the non superwash skein. In this one, there's a bit of speckles and stuff. I really like how this came out, and I, I made some. Uh, I have two of those. I made some minis. I made 20 gram minis this time um, in a green that would go really well if you make socks and you want contrasting toes, heels, and maybe cuffs. So I think I put them myself up as sock sets. And then another one I, I did was this one. And it might be hard to see, but on this superwash, the Nandal wool sock yarn, 
this lots and lots and lots of blue speckles all over it. You can see the bigger ones, but it's all over it. It's really cool. And on the white foam wool sock, it's just all mixed together. <laughs> And it's, it's really hard when you take photos of the white gum wool. They, it's hard to, to show that subtle variation and the beauty of them. I have to find a way of, of really displaying how beautiful they are. It's really hard. Another pink, pinky purple one was this one. You can see which one is which. <laughs> so much stronger, stronger colors and more um, separate colours on the skein compared to the some blue there, but yes, they're quite different. And then I did a, a sort of a yellowy. They look quite similar, but as you can see, the brown is coming out much more in the superwash and nylon sock yarn. And then the last one, I really, really like this one. So this is the super wash one. Both of these are the dandy sock yarn. I'll show you the skein. So it has a bit of the grey and then a bit of a brown with speckles on. And in the sock yarn from White Gun Wool, the Beautiful, subtle variation in the colour over the skin. So yes, that's just, I just love doing that, <laughs> comparing how they two come out. So that's some of the dyeing I've been doing. There's quite a lot in the shop at the moment. I wish that I could um, knit more stuff with my hand dyed and um, yes but I, I don't have the time to do it all. I would like to show you all how all of the skeins knit up and yes what they look like but this yes this, there's no time <laughs> for that. I think this is my favourite so this could be the favourite of the episode. <laughs> Still doesn't have a name. Yes, I have one thing I can show you that I purchased, and that's also sort of dream knitting. I purchased this book finally. I've looked at it a lot, or many times, and this is Susan B. Anderson's um, kids knitting book, teaching kids to knit. And I thought my eldest is about to turn eight. She started some crocheting, very basic, but she's really interested in it, but she does not have the patience to actually see it long enough to learn. But I thought, I've heard good things about this book and if I have it ready for when the time comes, when she will actually be able to sit down for long enough, yes, if I have it, then I'm ready. So I have this and if needed, I'll pass it on to someone who would really appreciate it and get use of it but I'll try it on my girls first. <laughs> see how I go and that's that I think yes thank you for spending this time with me I feel all filled with new energy and Going through my yarn has given me more, <laughs> more feelings of wanting to work with it. I might have to come up with another project using my own hand dyed. Don't know what, but it is. It's really fun doing these socks. That my daughter dyed. I felt like I didn't do socks for a while. Well, I did my, my crochet once, but I didn't knit any. And it's just so nice, just watching the colours 
work or grow um, with hand dye is, is just such an easy thing to do to just yes get that sense of calm and just enjoyment anyway now I'm just sounding all weird <laughs> so I'd like to thank you for joining me and check out the Etsy shop if you're interested in any of my hand dyed it's Rosehip Island on Etsy and if you would like to see the yarn in person and if you're um, in and around Launceston in Northern Tasmania the Knits Needles and Wool local yarn shop in Launceston they do stock some of my Victoria sock yarn so that's an 80% merino, 20% nylon. They do get a, a new shipment of that regularly. So they, they do have some at most times. So if you're interested, you could check that out and, and support um, the yarn shop. And make sure that we have some locally produced stuff in our yarn shop. But that's that's it. That's it. I think I have a few things happening during the, the year. Some exciting things coming up, but I'll talk about that when it's closer to the time when they will happen. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you for listening to me going on about all the stuff. And as always, please contact me if you have any questions, suggestions. I'm easy to get hold of on Instagram or on Ravelry. And thank you to those of you who came with suggestions last year, last year on the last episode on different sweater patterns. And I found quite a few really, really good ones that I really liked that I had not really seen before. Some of them I had seen, but I had not sort of taken them in. So now I have a whole new set of sweaters that I really would like to make. For now, I just need the time. So thank you. And um, yes, that's all for this time. Have a lovely time and I'll see you next time. So take care. Bye.